how much are you looking for in terms of um, just like how much we should be writing for each diagram? So um, what I would really like to see for the arc doc, um, I would probably want to see a uh, object oriented decomposition. So do kind of a class diagram. That's, that's a good one to start with. And then a paragraph that kind of explains what's going on. If you wanted to do a functional diagram, um, like even a, like a sequence diagram from UML and explain one feature like login or posting a textbook or whatever your system is, that's a good one. You could do a site map diagram, show where all the different pages are and how you move between different aspects of the system. You could do an activity diagram where you show how you start in one in one state and move to the next state and move to the next state and how you move through the system. Um, there are a ton of good options. Let me, okay. um, while I'm pulling so it's not up. Like a, it's not like restrictive. We can just sort of do what makes most sense. Yes, absolutely. Your goal, your goal as the architecture person is, can you communicate to me the way y'all have designed your system? Okay. So, um, question, um, and I'll, I'll get to the, the are, do I think there's any, well, I'll just answer the quest, question. Do I think there's any chance classes are online in the fall? Do I think there's a chance? Yes. Do I know the percentage of chance? No way. Um, I hope, against all hope, not. Um, but is there a chance? God, I have no idea. This, I mean, you know. I mean, I'm already going to be here through May, as it is. Um, UML sequence versus activity diagram. Um, all right, let me, let me, I'm going to pull up an example from last semester. Mm, architecture document. Let me find one that was good. Okay, this one looks good. Um, screen share, screen share, screen share. Go back over here. Okay, so here is, um, okay, so this was for Shopper Share, which was one of the projects last semester. Oh, you can see the, oh. uh, I hope this person doesn't mind. Um, we'll just ignore that part's there, I guess. Um, they did a very good job, so maybe they don't mind. They got a good score. So they're, they're basically showing what the models are and how they're connected to each other. So that's, that's a really good diagram. Then over here, what's this one? Okay, so here's a sequence diagram. So there was a question about sequence versus activity. This is a sequence diagram where we show how the, there's a flow of information. So the user creates an order, selects a store, adds items, passes to a queue. And so it shows basically how everything go through, goes through to do an order. Here is, okay, a functional decomp. So they did a similar type thing, except showing um, you want to modify the profile. Okay, I might not have given this one full credit, um, just because I think create user profile by itself probably should have been its own feature, whereas modify is not the core feature. So this one I actually probably would have docked a little bit. I think it's well done. I just think that it doesn't have, I, I think it should focus just on like create user should be the top field or edit profile or make user. And the last one they did, oh, they did a, um, a use case diagram. Yeah, that's fine. That's totally legit. So now let me jump over and do umldiagrams.org. Are those mostly functional or OO? Those were half functional, half OO. So the first one was object oriented. The sequence diagram, the sequence diagram is an OO way of doing a functional decomp. And then there was the functional decomp. Um, and then the, the last one was a requirements document, which was totally fine. Um, a requirements UML diagram. UML diagrams, activity, activity diagram.
I'll surely have a better example. Okay, well, we'll go with this one. Um, it's it's a state diagram is basically what it is. So you'd say you, the user the, the user would start here. These are the inputs into this state. This would be a um, like an OR gate, effectively saying if the login and password are correct, then continue on uh, or log in or get an error. So that's that is an example of an activity diagram. It's it's a, it's effectively a state chart. Arvin, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, it does. Great. Thank you. What else? Has anyone tried um, online office hours with the TAs yet? The TAs, the TAs have told me it's gone relatively well. Uh, new question. So a requirements analysis diagram is valid for the architecture document. Well, the for here, um, I think it's fine. I, I you know, I, I was looking for kind of other things, but you know, the, the person got credit for that. And I, I think with the the whole purpose of the architecture document is for the architecture person, architecture, uh, the software architect to communicate, I'll, I'll find a different example, to communicate design decisions in the system. And by the way, I am recording this, so you can, you'll be able to come back to it. Let me see if I can find another one really quick. Uh, I shouldn't have closed the window. That was dumb. Architecture document. Okay, this person, okay, I'll show this one. This person did, um, a, I, I think they did very good diagrams, but they didn't explain them, which I'm not a fan of, but I think the diagrams are good. So here's another for Rideshare, a uh, UML class diagram. Get my chat window back up. Um, again, th this is, you know, showing um, these are public, these are private. These are the, the functions that they expect to have for these classes. So I think that's pretty good. Here's another use case diagram. Um, again, this, the, you know, the purpose of communicating what's going on. I think this one um, does a good job. I, I would love, I really would like to have a paragraph of text. Basically, why did you make these decisions? I think that would be useful. Here's a sequence diagram. User clicks the login button, redirect to OAuth, throws it to Google. There's a response. He gets the uh, the code. I think there should be a response. I think the response. I think there's a small problem right here, but that's that's not too bad. Uh, token, token, call. Yeah. In general, that that's that's got that basically right. And here's a very nice, colorful functional decomposition. To join a ride, uh, you get a ride by reading the ride, getting the seats, validate the seats are available. You, it updates the ride to show that you took it and it, the updated ride comes back. Then you update the user saying they now are in it. Then you notify the driver. So that makes sense. That looks good. Um, can we make a use case diagram if there's only one type of user interacting with the system? Sure. Yeah, you can. Um, you know, you, you want to be able to show, uh, you could show if there's external um, external entities um, that you're interfacing with as well. You could, you could add them to uh, as external agents in the system, such as Google. You could do that too. But yeah, it's fine if you only have one user type. I, I would just, I, the only thing I'm going to say, well, that's not true. I keep saying things. Um, the purpose is communication. If you use a particular type of diagram and you are effectively communicating how your system is put together, then that's perfect. That's what I'm looking for.